guys what's up uh, people here i am with your uh, amendments applicable for your november 2023 people technically speaking if at all uh, you have seen the previous videos and if you have uh, gone through the may 2023 amendments then practically speaking you can definitely skip off this video there is absolutely not even a single word that has been added from may 2023 to november 2023 so there is nothing that's what even i was telling to all of you guys there is no amendments but yes i just wanted to make a video that saying that there are no amendments so uh, however yes whatever is these amendments i just try to tell you what are these places just pay an attention and go uh, with regards to other things are concerned just try to have also uploaded on youtube a designated video just on uh, uh, you know csr uh, i'll show you also just try to go through that video alone which is also covered i'm not saying no just try to go through that video it will give you a lot of insights csr can be that topic where you know they may uh, revolve around the questions yes people so uh, said that let us see what are the uh, amendments and uh, let us also solve the rtp which is applicable for your november 23 just go through this a good uh, information is given uh, we'll see what are the questions and all uh, probably you will also get a fair idea yes people let's do that okay first things are in the first chapter it seems in the preliminary chapter what are they saying for the purpose of basically people this was uh, the small company definition the paid up capital people earlier what is a small company whose paid up capital does not exceed 2 crore 20 crore basically 2 crore and 20 crore turnover now they have made it as people a small company is a company whose paid up capital does not exceed 4 crore and turnover does not exceed 40 crore i have been telling this amendment for the last three attempts so this is the amendment paid up capital not exceeding 4 turnover not exceeding 40 crore done that's all next one sir have told you this also whenever people if you remember in uh, name change alteration of name clause whenever a company wants to change its name it can change in two ways we had seen in the class one is voluntary whenever they want second one whenever the name is similar whenever a registered trademark holder if he files an application to central government central government will give you an order to change your name Earlier it was, once the central government gives you an order to change your name, you had to change it within six months. Now they have made that as three months. So if a central government passes an order to change a name of any company, you have to change within three months. So if I do not do what is going to happen, central government will allot a name on its own. And that name will not be fancy. People don't think this is a very good thing. The name will not be fancy. The name will be something like this, the central government order not complied and whatever is the order number, private limited or public limited, that is how the name is going to be. So it will be really embarrassing for the company. Yeah? And they can ask you a case based question here, whether the company can later on change its name after central government changes the name. Is it possible? Remember central government, even if they change the name, the companies are free to change its name even in the later point of time, whenever they want, they can do it. So remember that that's the amendment six months to three months. And this one, I told you central government only will allot a name, shall allot a name. That's the one thing. Just remember and go. Prospectus and allotment of securities. Uh, I told you this provision people, what is that? Uh, in the COVID time, I told you, uh, basically, uh, few people from you know we we started seeing a lot of uh, investments that is uh, happening through china which the government felt is not a very good thing for the security of the country and central basically our country cannot also directly take the name of china because of yes we have some dependencies of imports and all uh, like in our fema laws we have straight away taken the name of uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh in various places and we say that you cannot receive any investment from these countries but we cannot use the you know name of China just like that so we cannot prohibit China just like that so in the COVID what what we did in our FEMA policies we have made a change if at all there is any entity who is receiving FDI so someone is investing from outside India it can be a citizen it can be a company 
and which is this company if at all this company is from a country which is sharing land border with india which is sharing land border with india land border who and all will come people nepal bhutan and all we don't have a problem at all pakistan already we have banned bangladesh we have already banned and who else is the major player the major player is people china so this was somewhere routing through china so if you are coming from any country who shares land border with india you can make investment only after taking prior central government approval this was one amendment and i'll tell you one more question where you can expect here is that look at the word used also no offer or invitation of any securities under this rule shall be made to a body corporate incorporated or a national of a country which shares a land border with india unless its body corporate or the national as the case may be have obtained the prior approval of central government and attach the same with private placement offer come application letter meaning what people you have to take a prior approval of central government and you you need to attach that you have taken it in your ppol yes sir that's important remember and go yes that is your pas amendment if you remember people in may amendment video only i had covered all this there yeah again i'm doing again you guys are listening that's the best part so next one sir adt3 uh, sorry dpt3 what is dpt3 people nothing but uh, returns of deposits earlier also also we used to uh, file the returns of deposits people uh, earlier also we used to file the return of deposit which is audited by an auditor now they have added few words after that what is that sir earlier it was that you need to file dpt3 with roc which is audited by the auditor of the company they have added some things to it and declaration to that effect shall be submitted by the auditor in form dpt3 meaning what people whatever is the particulars whatever is given everything is fair and fine a declaration also has to be submitted by the auditor they just added that part okay okay not so important next thing people this also i have done people 100 times i have done uh what are those people whenever a bank so this is with regards to your charge chapter and it says this nothing contained in this rule shall apply to any charge required to be created or modified by a banking company under section 77 in the favor of rbi now what is this sir generally people if you remember this something called as repo rate reverse repo rate and all happening what is repo rate when rbi gives loan to bank bank will also give certain collateral to rbi and they will borrow loans Now the question was, whenever a collateral is created, by now you guys know we need to create a charge on it. Now the question was, whenever we are taking loan from RBI, and if a bank is creating any collateral on it, should we intimate this transaction to ROC? Was it required? They said people specific exemption has been provided. This is not needed. That is what is the exemption. Remember and go from MCQ point of view. It can be helpful. Done. Next one, sir. Sir. Uh, now there are certain forms people signing of charge e forms basically there are certain forms like cag1 cag4 cag8 cag9 uh, what are these you would have seen this in charge chapter whenever a company is filing this charge or memorandum of satisfaction of charge whenever you are filing charge documents to roc company files charge documents to roc generally who signs this documents let us imagine directors are signing these documents there is one more act called as insolvency and bankruptcy code that is not there in your syllabus according to insolvency and bankruptcy code whenever a company is not doing good financially so you will go almost to the stage of liquidation you are trying to revive your company you are trying to work out hard to come back in such case people obviously what will happen whoever are the directors of the company they will step down from their power in their power there will be someone else appointed and who is that sir that person is called as insolvency resolution professional now because directors are stepping down from their power and it has been replaced by a new person called as insolvency resolution professional as long as your company is undergoing insolvency process meaning you are trying hard to come out video con is example now directors own sign these forms filed with roc the insolvency resolution professional appointed by the tribunal will sign all these forms which is filed with roc understood that's what is the amendment again this was also there next one sir management and administration uh 
okay this was nothing but people we have seen this whenever people there is something called as uh, your uh, register of members we had seen this in section uh, 88 94 people can come and inspect the register of members in this register of members there were certain personal information now they have passed an amendment that whenever people are coming and inspecting the register of members certain details will not be available in the register they can hide it sir what is that information remember and go from a mcq point of view it can be important address of a person can be will not be available for public inspection email id of a person will not be available any other unique identification number will not be available pan number will not be available these four will not be available for a inspection in the register of members these will be hidden clear on okay next one sir in declaration and payment of dividend we have done this people there is a section with regards to iepf in iepf we have seen what and all can be credited what and all can be debited in the credit people section 90 which spoke about spo provisions a particular person will have to disclose everything to the company within that one year if you remember that big chart we would have seen or if at all you guys have attended anywhere else you would have seen that provision if at all you are a significant beneficial owner of a company section 90 if you do not disclose the details to the company within that one year the company would have applied to the tribunal the tribunal now will order if you do not disclose these details within one year all the documents will be transferred to iepf meaning all the shares will be transferred to iepf that is what they have added one list corresponding list has been added to this iepf uh, uh, account what and all can be credited to iepf account the shares coming from that significant beneficial ownership can also be credited that's what they have added not so very important and all people csr uh, i'll not again be going through csr i'll tell you why also what you guys can do is people uh, open youtube i'll show you two ways where you can uh, learn more confidently about csr so uh, just try to search for people csr amendments just search for csr amendments people you guys will find one specific chapter itself made this i had recorded for uh, cs executive but the content is same there are two parts you guys can completely follow it people only specifically everything with regards to csr is discussed in uh, you know one place so just watch and go it will be very insightful helpful also if you think no sir we will not watch other thing and all you should specifically record for us sir if that is the case people then uh, ca inter law marathon yes people ca inter law marathon open this someone really good has given us some time stamps go here your someone has given you the time stamps also yes sir and you know where this comes accounts of companies people open there again i have already recorded uh, your csr amendments in one place try to go through all this csr amendments uh, this is also sufficient but i would tell you if you want to cover it completely consolidated watch that cs executive one see whatever is applicable to you there even more in detail will be there whatever is applicable to you try to watch that alone clear people why i am doing this people i have done this once in the class I have done this once as a part of your marathon I have once recorded it for a particular thing and i have uploaded it as just under a cs banner so it is done thrice so watch it it's again the same getting the point all of you yes so i am not going to deal this csr thing again this is also the csr csr yes sir csr this is also csr everything is csr we have done this people yes csr if you leave all these people there is absolutely nothing also yeah next one sir there is a one uh, amendment people in uh, accounts of companies companies accounts in that people there is a rules you would have you would have done something called as whenever uh, books of accounts is maintained in electronic form in our pdf also whenever a company wants to maintain books of accounts in an, in electronic form there people there were two provisions they have made little change there what is that 
whenever you are maintaining books of accounts people it should be always accessible in india when and all it was not given so they have given you extended word accessible in india at all the times accessible in india but when so they have given you at any given point of time it has to be accessible in india that is one thing they have given next one uh the for the words periodic basis the words daily basis shall be substituted what are those people whenever a company is maintaining a you know backup of your books of accounts maintained in electronic form the backup will be maintained in india and that india people they were saying it has to be maintained on periodic basis periodic means basics means what once in a year a quarterly a half yearly they are telling you it has to be maintained on a daily basis basically it has to be there backup has to be there in india at any given point of time that's the rule that's the only thing try to remember and go is clear huh? yes that's the thing see this is the rule the books of accounts and other relevant books and paper maintained in electronic mode shall remain accessible in india so as to be usable for subsequent reference now they have given accessible india and they have added this sir, at all times the next one is the backup of the books of accounts backup backup periodic basis now they have said it as daily basis that's all clear ah uh, next one sir csr people again watch that it is covered csr again covered csr again covered basically implementation of csr administration expense of csr that's all people so try to watch that one csr video we have covered almost everything and let us see the rtp questions people which is available for your november attempt bharat sanskar limited now what i would tell you uh, along with me try to pause the video see if you are able to answer if not then only try to go to the question is it clear all of you yes sir okay bharat sanskar limited having its registered office at haridwar is a listed public company limited look at the names okay it is registered with an authorized share capital of 300 crore and the paid up share capital is 200 crore divided into 20 it is okay the company is very renowned in manufacturing and supplying devotional items such as high quality workshops and etc okay the board of directors of the company constituted of sagar as a managing director sagar is the managing director wherever our characters are important remember so it will save time if i were you i can also take a pencil in my answer booklet not on the uh, uh, key sheet omr and all I can, I can take on my answer booklet right in the pencil whatever are the characters hari rahi sansar and nab are the directors of the company okay they are the directors don't do this in your exam and all in the company raju was holding the post of company secretary raju is a cs okay sonu is a cfo and moti is the assistant accountant the company prepared its financial statement for the year 2023 the board of directors approved the same and it was signed by concerned authorities and thereafter submitted to the auditors on 10th may 2023 for their report the turnover of the company was 100 crore during the 2023 the auditors report was duly received and the annual account with board's report and all necessary annexures were ready on 15th july 2023 after complying with all the formalities as per company law the board meeting was called agm was fixed at the agm financial statements along with all annexures was duly received and adopted by the members present however the company could not file the copies of financial statements along with all documents annexed to the financial statement adopted by the agm they have not filed it since it is also informed that in april 2023 the company had destroyed all the books of accounts together with relevant vouchers up to financial year ending 31st march 2018 on the basis of the above facts and applying applicable provisions of companies act and applicable rules there under choose the correct answer of the following so people on the face of it we have seen i believe the question is revolving around signing of books of accounts there is a failure because cs cfo and all have given we need will they will they'll be asking who can sign the uh, you know books or financial statements failure is there what will be the condition i believe that will be we'll see the company is at 2013 provides that financial statement should be approved by board of directors signed by the prescribed authorities and submitted to the auditors for their report accordingly the financial statements of bharat sanskar limited shall be signed by signed by financial statements shall be signed by 
who shall sign the financial statements people if you remember chairperson or if authorized by chairperson they will sign if not two directors in the two directors one has to be a managing director in our case who was a managing director uh, that person who sagar sagar yes, so sagar has to sign so two directors so sagar and hari rahi sansar and nap any one of them shall sign so two right directors and the people if at all the company has appointed ceo cfo and cs ceo cfo and cs we have appointed cs and cfo we have appointed c cfo and cs ceo is not there so people sagar anyone from that bracket raju and sonu has to sign yes who and all were there san sagar was there no sagar is to for sure we know what Sagar is the managing director. Where and all Sagar is there? Sonu and Raju mandatory. Correct, ah? Sonu and Raju mandatory. Along with that, two directors has to be there. Here there is no Sonu and Raju. Sonu is not there. I'll eliminate it straight away. People, this is the answer. People, Sagar is Sansar. Correct, ah? Sagar is managing director. Sansar, Sonu and. Uh, Raju, I hope you are getting the point. Just read the provision once you will understand it. Okay, next one, sir. As per the provision of company law, the board report with annexures to the above company is required to be duly signed by. Who should uh, sign the board report, people? Obviously, the board report will be signed by two directors. So I will take Sagar and Hari. It's possible, lah. Sagar and Hari being a managing director and a director. Yes, sir. in the above case scenario the company failed to file copies of financial statements along with all the documents annexed, annexed to the financial statement adopted on the agm uh, in this context which of the following statement is correct which of the following statement is correct okay what is the following statement sir uh Company failed to file copies of financial statements. A managing director and a whole time director shall be liable. Managing director and a whole time director shall be liable. So in this case, who will be liable, sir? So if you remember, managing director, who was our managing director? Da. Sagar, and who was? Uh, Managing director and so many people. Basically, CFO in charge of finance. People. So, managing director, whole time director in charge of finance, CFO. You remember that provision, ah, sir. In this case, sir, our whole time director in charge of finance is not there. Then who alone is left, sir? The person who is left, people, is uh, Sagar and Raju. Can I say that term? Who is Raju? No, Raju is uh, CS, da. Sorry, Sonu. Who is CFO, da? Sonu. Ah, Sonu. Sagar and Sonu people. The managing director, the managing director, the whole time director in charge of finance, and uh, CFO. Because C, I mean, whole time director in charge of finance is not there. I'll take CFO. They will be liable. As per the provisions of Companies Act, the act of the Company in destruction of all the was not correct because simple people. I have to maintain the books of accounts for a period of eight years. I hope you guys know this method of interpretation. I hope it was a good question. Method of interpretation which brings into effect provisions for improving the conditions of certain classes of people who are underprivileged. Underprivileged, ah, beneficial construction. See people beneficial construction for underprivileged people. If at all you are trying to make any exceptions, it will be coming under your beneficial construction. Next one, people. Win Limited bought fifteen percent shares of Om Limited. Win Limited bought fifteen percentage shares of Om Limited in the year twenty twenty. It formed a trust for its employees and donated its fifteen percent shares of Om Limited along with ten lakh to the. Trust and became its trustee in Feb 2023. Om Limited acquired. Om Limited acquired 55% stake. 
in win limited through an in house deal can a subsidiary company hold share in holding company justify the situation sir can the subsidiary company hold the shares if you remember section 19 people exception was trustee here what is relevant people the subsidiary company was holding shares even before it became a subsidiary you see you remember that exceptions trustee holding in the capacity of legal representative of a deceased member and if you are holding shares even before you became a subsidiary company i believe they are asking you that look for options ha uh, people win limited can do so as it is a holding shares in own right prior to becoming a subsidiary of it became first no it was first only a shareholder simple the date of maturity of a bill payable 100 days after site and which is presented for site on 4th may 2023 is the date of maturity date of maturity up to uh, calculate people for 100 days and the bill is after site ah after site means what people whenever i send you the bill whenever i send you after that people the the 100 days will count so i have sent the bill on 4th may it will count from 5th may yes sir so try to calculate uh, let us try to calculate i'll open a calendar or else you guys can do that knuckle theory da you guys will calculate on knuckle no let us imagine in may there are 31 days in that people may 4th you have sent we have seen your uh, general clause act people whenever i'm taking uh, from so i will not count 4th so my days will start from 5th correct ah yes sir okay from 5th so may as 31 days eliminate 4 days so that will give me 27 days in may may june is 30 ah july is 31 ah correct ah ah add this people how much will come to 60 80 88 and 100 days it is so add another 12 days that will come to august 12th correct okay and i know there is three period grace period so it will be 13 14 15 you guys see 15 when you guys go and mark like this someone will come and hit you behind why people day it is a national holiday day it is a public holiday whenever there is a public holiday you will take the day preceding the day then people 14th august will be the date of maturity i hope it's clear go through once eighth people new age private limited issued 9 percentage non convertible debentures worth rupees 10 lakh and thereafter the directors contemplated to get them listed after due formalities these privately placed non convertible debentures of 10 lakh were listed which of the following is applicable people remember da if it is convertible debentures then they will be called as a listed company according to listed company definition if at all any other security other than equity is listed and that too if it is issued on private placement basis it will not be considered as listed company so in our case it is not a listed company because we know the grounds if at all it is non convertible debentures which is issued on a private placement basis irrespective of the limit it will be considered as what people non listed companies only new age financial shall not be considered as a listed company value and all is irrelevant to me a company entered into a process of producing capital mr shah is concerned officer designated for preparing the list of creditor to record their reservation and reach to a settlement under section 66 of companies act 66 capital reduction people mr shah while preparing such list deliberately conceal the name of ms ramya who is one of the company's creditor whenever you do it deliberately fraudulent also and reduction of capital will not be effectual you will be liable as if your liability is not at uh, reduced what what are they asking we'll see whereas make misstatement in contrast of some other creditors claim the reduction whereas uh, offense committed by mr shah is punishable under section 447 he did it intentionally right so fraud companies act also under section 4 and 17 red with 4 and 15 of indian penal code okay whatever is the offense he made he is liable under 447 of companies act also it seems and also he is liable under 4 and 17 red with 415 of indian penal code you are required to select the most appropriate option given below in the context of offense committed 
beautifully framed question people by now i hope you guys are getting i believe the question is going towards general clauses act if at all i have to tell you the exact word i believe it's uh, double jeopardy a person cannot be uh, punished for the same offense twice under two different acts that is not possible i believe that is a section i believe section 26 of general clause act but we'll see what is the answer i believe what is the question at least okay a company is for under both definitely not possible it is any one i am telling you people so same thing liable under both no not possible under the both not possible our people shall be liable to be prosecuted and punished under either of the companies act or indian penal code so it is any one act you cannot be punished for the same thing under two different acts that is not possible e good one da see it's a very good one they have combined the general clause act and companies act good one nice next one which are wimers limited called its agm on 20th september to adopt the financial statements as of 31st march 2022 due to want of quorum the meeting was adjourned and the adjourned meeting was held on 27th september 2022 what is the last day to file annual returns mgt7 people should be filed within 60 days of conclusion of agm conclusion of agm people will be the date of the actual conclusion not the first one it is 27th you have to take it from 27 people so it will be 60 days from 27th of september 2022 so this will be the answer correct ah good question indeed okay let us look at some theory questions okay one second ah yes sir the paid up share capital of golden shoes limited is 25 lakh divided into 2 lakh 50000 equity shares of 10 niche some of the shareholders holding 2500 equity shares are residents of london for whom a foreign register of shareholders is opened there at on november 1st 2022 advise golden shoes limited within how much time after opening of foreign register it is required to file with roc a notice of situation of the london office okay people they are asking you foreign register da first thing it is optional it is not mandatory on the company section 88 we had seen and whenever people a company opens a foreign register it can be for equity say any security you have to intimate roc people uh, within 30 days in the form people mgt3 if you remember correct ah and within 30 days from the date of opening such register so the day of opening register is november 1st people again general clauses act will come into picture within 30 days meaning what from the date of opening the register exclude november 1st november has 30 days so if i count people it will come to december 1st because i will start counting 30 days from november 2nd december 1st will be my 30th day and they are telling you it has to be communicated within 30 days so I, the last day that will be there for me to uh, intimate roc will be november 30th i hope you guys got the logic c is a good one okay next one people sat satvik satvikya private limited was formed on 25th april 2020 at the time of formation it had provided in its articles that the company shall not be permitted to accept or keep advance subscription or call money in advance however in august 2023 the need was felt to amend the articles with respect to retention of calls in advance decide whether provisions inserted in the articles at the time of formation of company can be considered as void people if you remember they are asking you the section people section 50 which talks about calls in advance calls in advance people any rights with regards to call in calls in advance is directly given the section itself starts saying subject to the articles of association or as unless otherwise provided in the articles if you remember people even when we did articles of association they are clubbing section 6 and this particular section 50 basically people it is nothing but uh, your entrenchment provisions only you can have your own rules as long as the the act only provides you to have 
So if act only is telling you section 50 we had seen you can take calls in advance provided you need to follow your articles of association. So you can say it is restricted, you can say it is allowed, both are valid. Yes sir, it's a good one. Ui, what are the given calculations and all? Okay. The dividend amounts received or receivable on equity shares held by Mr. Vaibhav for the financial year 21-22 was as follows. So he has received some dividends it seems. Name of the company from Suvas Limited, they have declared dividend on 25th August 2022. How much they have declared? They have declared 800. Dividend was paid on 23rd October 2022. I hope this should be clear to you. Uh, they have not paid within 30 days. I hope you remember that uh, table within 5 days, within 30 days, first they have to open unpaid dividend account. <laughs> within 30 days, they have to make the payment. That is what is the provision revolving around. Bandol Nidhi Limited, 4th September 2022, they have paid 100. Dividend was not paid within a stipulated time period. Okay. Also, Mr. Vaibhav holds 100 cumulative preference shares of face value 1 lakh in aggregate of Jipanti Limited, on which dividend payable is at the rate of 8% per annum. However, during financial year 21 22, Jipanti Limited did not earn any profits. In the context of aforesaid case scenario, please answer the following question. What could be the punishment to the companies aforesaid in the table with respect to delayed payment of dividend amount? If you remember people, uh, we had seen this uh, dividends chapter, uh, failure for non-payment. Yes, if at all you make a delay people, the uh, penalty will be people 18% per annum. Yes sir, so you need to calculate people, what is the day of delay? 18% for 800 rupees into, you need to see how many days. Try to see how many days people, whenever there is a Okay, how many days they would have done a calculation try to see the calculation interest at the rate of 18 percent to be calculated from 25th september 2022 to 23rd october 2022 see if you guys are getting this right the calculation yes sir where did it go ah. yes sir so i need to make the payment within 30 days so you take your 30 days from 25th August, within that I need, I should have made a payment, I have not made, from there it will start here the rest of the period. So for that I will multiply into that many days divided by 365. How much ever is the number I will get, I believe they got somewhere around rupees 11, that is the penalty. Extra interest the shareholder will earn and of course people in addition to that, that penalty, imprisonment and all that is there, that is punishment. But what is this person eligible to, he will get all this. Yes, sir. Next one, people. Uh, with regards to Nidhi company, people, because we do not have that Nidhi provisions in detail, we, we would have not seen. But what exactly this provision is talking about, I'll just explain you this part. Because Nidhi is not there in our syllabus directly. Uh, you will see Nidhi, okay. You, you used to see Nidhi in CA final. Now it is not there. Uh, CA final also they have removed. Now, what is this provision, people? In a Nidhi company, if the dividend declared, is 100 or less than 100 only dividend if it is 100 or less than 100 and if you did not make the payment you can just make a public advertisement saying that a dividend was declared on so and so date within three months you need to make this declaration in public announcement you need to give a public announcement within three days within uh, uh, three months you need to make a public announcement saying that uh, the so and so dividend was declared from so and so company and uh, you also need to give uh, uh, what is that you need to give this public advertisement even on the notice of the nidhi board this is the provision there is no penalty as such so that is what you, you had to write here but yes nidhi is not directly there in our syllabus so we wouldn't have seen this in detail but yes nonetheless this is the provision if you want just see the provision alone once they have linked it with Nidhi provision and the dividends provision. Okay. If the dividend declared was announced by the company in local language in one local newspaper and announcement of the said declaration was also displayed on the notice board of the company for at least 
three months that is till 4th december 2022 then it will be valid okay so that is what we have seen and if you do that there is no punishment okay what else was there ah so they have asked you some question with regards to preference share obviously the word used is called cumulative you need to carry forward the interest to the next year if it is not paid for two years you would have seen they will enjoy equivalent voting rights with regards to however you treat equity shares they will write get the same right to vote on all the resolutions that's one thing you need to remember next one hello private limited is engaged in the business of manufacturing premium quality rattle toys they have a huge market for their toys all over india the company has appointed its statutory auditors for the financial year 2023 the engagement letter of the auditors was signed with a clause that fee to be mutually decided directors of the company have approached you to seek your advice for provisions related to remuneration of auditors as per the provisions of companies act remuneration people it can be mutually decided however it is approved by shareholders in the general meeting and uh, remuneration does not uh, include uh, your uh, uh, what is it reimbursement of expenses any travel cost all of that that is not included in the remuneration so if you if you write all this then yes it is more than sufficient approved in general meeting decided by both the parties and uh, the third thing is it does not include your reimbursement expenses and all audit expenses and all shri limited has an authorized capital of 10 lakh equity share of face value of 100 each some of the shareholders expressed their opinion in the annual general meeting that it is very difficult for them to trade in the shares of the company in the stock market and requested the company to reduce the face value of each share to rupees 10 and increase the number of shares to uh, 1 crore. Examine whether request of the shareholders is considerable as per the provision of the company that. People, alteration of MOA people, capital clause, uh, section 61, subsection 1, clause D consolidation subdivision of shares what are they asking you uh, they want to reduce the face value so they want uh, basically people uh, they want to consolidate and subdivide they want to reduce it into smaller denomination possible yes possible so the shareholders can make a request in a general meeting. The directors can take it up. If at all you guys alter your capital, you need to intimate ROC in a form called SH7 within 30 days. You need to pass an ordinary resolution that is sufficient. A limited company raised a security deposit of 80 crore. Sec oh, sorry, secured a deposit of 80 crore as on 30th June 2023. From public at the rate of 12% per annum, repayable after 3 years. The charges have been created within prescribed time in favor of trustee of depositors against the deposit taking following the assets of the company as security. Okay, they have created a security on the following assets land and building, plant and machinery, factories, uh, trademark, goodwill. People, if you remember, section 76 says. Uh, whenever you are creating a charge, you are not supposed to create a charge on what people? You are not supposed to create a charge on intangible assets. So obviously that is not allowed, but see, let us see what is it. Decide the validity of the charges created with reference to the provisions of the Companies Act. Validity, sir, they are telling you whether we have created the charge properly or not. Okay, what is that, sir? Okay, va value of deposits, people, is 80 crore. Interest is people 12% per annum and repayable after 3 years. So that is how much people 80 crore into 12 percentage that is into three years. See whatever is the sum that comes in 80 crore into 12 percentage into three years. So you need to add 80 crore plus whatever is the amount you get here. Whatever you get here that you need to add here. Yes, sir. Now you need to see whatever the charge created, whether it covers all of this or not, because always remember charge has to cover your interest as well as principal component. And charge should always exclude your uh, uh, intangible assets. So just check these two, it will help you. 55 plus 15 people, 70 plus 80. This is not included, this is not included. Obviously people, imagine even if this comes to somewhere around uh, uh, 
uh, imagine even if it comes from around 15 20 crore i'm very sure that it is not covered because the tangible asset itself, itself is maximum 80 crore so i will say no the company has not properly created the charge because it does not include intangible assets as well as it also covers the interest component yes sir done that's all this was a good question actually i hope you guys also realized that. mr sanjeev is dealing in high quality timber mr amit wants to purchase the timber from him on credit which is to be used in renovation of his house sanjeev is a dealing in timber amit wants to purchase so he wants to purchase from sanjeev and pramod gives a guarantee pramod is giving a guarantee if at all amit does not repay i will pay okay mr sanjeev supplied the required timber to amit afterwards mr amrit amit embarrassed and contact embarrassed means people he is become insolvent and contracts with his creators. He enters into a contract with the creators, meaning people's settlement, to assign to them his property in consideration of their releasing him from their demands. So he has said, I have become insolvent, whatever I have the property, settle off the money with the property, take off that and leave me. You are, you are not supposed to ask anything else from me going forward. On due date, Mr. Sanjeev filed a suit against Mr. Pramod. Sanjeev filed a suit against Mr. Pramod. In the exam, make sure you write the characters first in pencil. You will know who, where is coming. It will save time. For recovery of the payments of timber due on Mr. Amit. Explain with reference. Simple da. Whenever you have entered into a contract, whenever you have gone and uh, entered into a, uh, what is that? Uh, if at all you have entered into a contract with the, uh, what is the exact word? Uh, compromised. If at all you have settled, that's a matter. That's the word. If at all there is any settlement or if you have entered into any compromise without the consent of the surety, if a principal debtor and a creditor enters into a compromise, automatically he will also be revoked people. So in this case, no, this S cannot recover anything from P because there is a settlement that has taken place. Mr. Vibhav made endorsement of a bill of exchange amounting to 35,000 to Mr. Rishabh. Vibhav made an endorsement to Rishabh, but before the same could be delivered to Mr. Rishabh, Mr. Vibhav passed away. So, endorser passed away. Mr. Somesh, son of Vibhav. Vibhav has a son called Somesh, who wants the only, uh, son, who was the only legal representative of Mr. Vibhav. Vibhav approached Mr. Rishabh and informed him about his father's death. Now, Mr. Somesh is willing to complete the instrument which was executed by his deceased father. Okay. Remember people, whenever there is a death of uh, an endorser, if at all endorser had appointed an agent or a nominee to do this particular activity, even after the death of the endorser, the agent can just to go and hand over the check to Mr. R. This would have been a valid contract there is nothing, no other requirement to be fulfilled. However, the legal representative is not considered as an agent by default. So now legal representative by default, just like that cannot go and give this check because this will not be considered as a complete transaction. So in this case, the son cannot complete this transaction because he is not a agent of the person. He is a legal representative. Remember this provision, a different one. Okay, General Clause Act, Neelu Chandra was director in Laddu Sweets. Once while dealing with supplier of raw materials for the company, she agreed to get some secret commission, okay, from supplier for making the deal. Afterwards, on finding the facts, the company has filed a suit against Neelu Chandra. She contended that the Section 166 of Companies Act provides a director of a company shall not achieve or attempt to achieve any undue gain either to himself or to his relatives. Huh. I hope you got the question. Himself, Neelu, and they are saying General Clause Act. Correct? Huh? General Clause. It is coming under General Clause Act. I hope you guys by now you should be able to relate. Probably she would have said uh, the act says it is he who is not liable. I am a she. General Clause Act says people, he includes she, male includes female. So she will be liable. 
she contained the section 160 is male male director only that's all the same thing explain the meaning of without prejudice as a harmonious aid to interpretation without prejudice people without harming without uh, affecting any other section that will also prevail with this will also prevail that is the meaning of without prejudice correct ah yes sir that's what they have asked so people that is your uh, rtps and that's your amendments da i hope this helped let me know if it helped and uh, people there is no much amendments so you guys can watch whatever is the video i just showed you as a, a marathon which is applicable for your may 2023 attempt the same marathon will hold good for your attempt also so if you guys have any doubts you can just watch that uh, and let me know if you guys uh, you know liked it yes so thank you so much people see you bye bye all the very best and good luck may the best of luck be with you thank you so much people see you bye bye